So is it written for you to have a spouse? I want to answer this question and finally just give you a more um, grounded answer that you can just put this question to bed because a lot of people ask this and operate from this question and it affects you internally. So there's two, I'm going to answer this from two different angles. And um, first I want to start off with when you're having the thought and you're driven from the thought that it's probably not written for me, you are going to make it happen because what you think uh, produces your results. So, and I'm talking on a spiritual level and on a, a practical level. So I'll explain this in a minute. Um, on a practical level, when you're thinking the thought, um, let's say you had like two, three, four, five failed experiences in the past. And in your mind, you've created this thought of like, maybe it's not written for me. Look at my age. Look at my, look at what's happened to me. Maybe it's not written for me. And you feel helpless. You feel hopeless. You feel uh, just kind of apathetic. You kind of give up because you're thinking the thought, maybe Allah hasn't written it for me. And when you're feeling hopeless, your dua has become less uh, you made with conviction. You feel and act in a way where you're kind of just, just you've given up. So now every time you do talk to someone subconsciously, your mind has already decided that it's not for you. So then in a way, it just it doesn't work out because you don't show up as yourself anymore. So you've lost that spark because you've decided that it's not written for you. Okay, so when you decide, it's it's when you decide it's not written for you, you make it possible. So this is what happens, right? People go through a bunch of experiences where it's, it hasn't, and that's kind of I'll show you a, a diagram here. But people go through like this is this is you, okay? These are the people you talk to, and this is your person. So let's say you when you're talking to people you realize like it's failing, like, okay, oh, this is not going to work. It's not working. It's not working. And then you, as you talk to more people, you're deciding like, maybe it's just not written for me. And then you kind of stop before you get to your person, because what's happening is the same analogy as if you're going, driving in a car, going to the grocery store and you, you run into stop signs on your way to the grocery store, you run to one stop sign, two stop sign, three stop signs. You're not going to say, okay, I guess it's just not meant for me to go to the grocery store. It's just not written. No, it's the stop sign is included as part of the journey to get to the grocery store. And same exact thing happens when it comes to having, um, accomplishing the dream that you want, which is getting the spouse that you want or some, some version of that, right? Getting the job that you want. You are going to run into a lot of stop signs, which is failures, a lot of failures that... Um, are part of the process and if you make each one of those stop signs a problem that why why is it why is it not working for me that means it's not written then you're you're literally just going to stop at the stop sign or maybe even go home you're going to go home and be like oh I guess it's just not written for me and that's why it's so important to not be driven from the thought of like maybe it's not written for me so what do we actually change this to we're going to change it to I don't know if it's written for me, but let me find out. I don't know if it's meant for me to open a be big, beautiful business or a restaurant that I want, but I know I'm going to run into a lot of failures and I'm going to keep trying until I, I get to the dream. And I won't know if it's written for me until I die. The day I die, then I'll be like, oh, okay, turns out it wasn't written for me. Or until you decide that you don't want it, you don't want it anymore. Okay. So this is so important because when you're building that conviction and when you're making your dua, it's so important for you to believe that no, it is written for you because when it you you believe that Allah can make anything happen, that's when you make dua from, from that place. Because why? Because there's a lot of women or men who, you know, get married uh, in their 40s, 50s, 60s even. That's not a problem, but it's just people who give up early who think, oh, okay, I guess it's just not written for me. Then they make that their new identity then it just actually, they, they make that come true. They just never get married. So there's a lot to that, but I'm just, that's that's just part one, right? So now now what, okay? But Lema, like there, there it really is a chance that maybe you're not, could not get married in this life. Like there is a chance. And like, yeah, okay, sure. Here's why. There's two aspects to this, okay? So 
if if we came at it from a business perspective, let's say the perspective is my goal, I want to make $50,000 this year, let's just say, okay, is it written for you to make that much money? Because it's your risk, right? Marriage is risk. And so is, you know, money. So is it written for you to marry? The way we'll know is we'll keep trying different aspects to different things, different skills, different uh, what skills do I need? What 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 do I need to change? What all this like? And you self develop yourself to be to be the kind of person that knows how to make fifty thousand dollars a year. And even if we bump up to a million dollars a year, you also have to learn the skills of what it takes to to be someone who can make it. Is it written for you? We'll only find out if you actually try it and keep doing it and failing over and over and over and over again until you get there. So. I want to entertain the idea of what if maybe it's not written for you. And the reason I'm I'm saying this is like, it's written in the Quran for us to get married. And so everyone does have a spouse is just whether or not they choose to go after that gift, that reality, that risk. That you get to choose that. And what I mean by that is you get to decide what does it take for me to maybe approach this marriage thing in a different way. Maybe I'm maybe I'm coming at it from the wrong mindset. Maybe there are there is like a way to get there, but I just don't see it yet. How can I get there in a way that it is possible for me? Because it is written in the Quran and Allah wants you to be happy and Allah wants you to get married. And I'm not equating happiness to marriage, but I'm just saying if you want to get married, that's that it's it's a it's a thing, right? It's a, it has to happen. It it has to it, you you're responsible for making it happen. And also, because when I say responsible, you're, when, what you think impacts the way you make dua. So let me entertain this other idea, right? Uh, what if it's not written for you? Let's just say, let's just go with the, with the devil's advocate here and say, maybe it's not written for you in this life. Now what? What does that mean? What thoughts come up? Oh, okay, well, if, if I ne not, it's not meant for me in this life, that means I'm going to die alone and no one's going to take care of me and... Okay, so this is where we have to do the mindset work of what actually happens if you were to never get married. Because what happens is your brain is imagining a different uh, image of a reality that you thought you missed out on. So if you think marriage will make you happy and you're imagining this amazing life, and that was the only thing that if Allah doesn't grant it to you, then... Uh, that means, you know, Allah uh, doesn't want to give it to you for some reason. Um, you're also missing the other alternative thing that could have happened, which maybe you, you could have gotten married, but it could have been the most miserable time of your life and you could have gotten a divorce and you had to have kids with someone you didn't want to have kids with and now you have to co-parent. And, and I've seen too many traumatic uh, situations in that where, you know, they did get married, but it's just ruined their life in so many ways. And so how do you know that Allah didn't um, dodge a bullet for you? Right. So we have to think about it. And any time you feel like you're missing out on something, it's because you have an image of what you think it should have. It could have been. It could have been like I could have had like an amazing spouse and have beautiful kids. And you don't know that you don't know what could have happened. Allah, maybe if it wasn't, if it really, 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 really at the end of the day, if it wasn't written for you, then Allah saved you from uh, he didn't, there isn't anyone in this life that's worth uh, worth it for you that would bring you closer to Allah. So now we have to reframe all of this. If Even if it's written for you, maybe not like written for you ever, but maybe it's written you 10 years from now. In the meantime, how do you want to live your life? You could choose to live it very miserably and think, oh, like, I'm never going to get married. What's wrong with me? Or you have another choice. And this is the most more empowering choice of like, Alhamdulillah, Allah is dodging a bullet for me and he's saving me from something that I I'll never know what it is. But I know that once I whenever I get married, whether it's in this life or the next, it's gonna be it's gonna be really good because Allah's really saving it for me. And then we have to work on cleaning up our thoughts about what it means to be single. Because it's not bad. It's not it's not a bad thing. It's it's a neutral uh, thing to be single it's like you're the one who decides what that experience is going to be like and that goes back to um, how to manage the pressure right how to manage all of this when you know from the bottom of your heart that Allah has chosen you to live this beautiful specific life and he's chosen you let's say to be single for now what do you how do you want to live this life 
I've seen people like just throw away their single lives because they're so upset that they're not married yet. And it's like, bro, like you got so much, you have so much going for you. You have so much to live for. And so that being single is one of the greatest time phases in your life if you use it, if you think about it in the different perspective, which is, you know, you have you have a gift, you have to give you have gifts to uncover and, and a purpose to live, which is to worship Allah. And now you get to decide how you want to do it without being, you know, held down for for um and and this is what I'm saying, right? Like you get to decide how your single life uh how to live it. So I remember when I was, before I was married, um, I made this decision to myself. I said, I don't know when I'm going to get married. I might get married when I'm 45, maybe when I'm 50. But in the meantime, I promised myself that I'm going to live the best life I can live. And I'm going to travel and I'm going to live all the experiences that I want. I'm going to live in different states. I'm going to like find the jobs that I want to work and I'm going to show up the best that I can. And I've just kind of submitted. I said, Ya Allah, I don't care when you give it to me. As long as you're happy with me, I don't care. Because I know happiness only comes from within and with from Allah. And that comes from Allah. The source is always from Allah. It is never from another human being. So I would never put that power in another person's hands to to wait. Like, oh, I don't know when I'm going to get married. I'm, I'm probably going to be miserable until then. That doesn't work that way. That's not how Allah created us. So... If it, if you like, and I'll create another video on this too, of, of if you feel sad that you haven't gotten married yet and how to grieve it properly, I'll create a separate video for that. But in the meantime, wherever you're at is exactly where you're supposed to be. And it is written for you to get married and you have to act like it is a hundred percent. You have to act like you, it is written for you to get married and you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. And that includes figuring out what skills you need, all this to, to actually change your perspective because we're not taught how to actually find a spouse and what tools we need and what perspective we need. And so we're coming at it from a very uh, disempowered place, which doesn't attract empowered people or empowered potentials. Um, so yeah, so if you if you want to, and also I'm also uh, doing a, a group coaching program to help you uh, per, like give you the tools you need to actually find your spouse. When I say tools, I mean the helping you rewire your whole your whole brain to feel more uh, confident in yourself, to feel more like yes, I'm in, I got this. I'm I'm gonna show up in my in my confident energy, and I'm going to uh, be happy with with the journey, and that's what gets you there, inshallah. So if you want to link the link to that is to to register for my group coaching program is in my uh, is in the bio and in the, on my website. And I also offer one on one coaching, too. So um, I will make more videos about uh, about this topic soon, inshallah. And um, I know a lot of you are reaching out to me and and telling me that these topics are helping you. So I really appreciate it. And it's um, I'll be making a lot more coming soon, too. So. All right. Hope you guys hope this helps and I will see you next week. Inshallah.